This is a carbon reactor. Well, it's actually just a reactor, but if you put carbon inside, then it's a carbon reactor. If you put GFO inside, it's a GFO reactor. And if you put catamorpha inside, then it's a Cato reactor. I think you get the idea. Water goes in right here, is pushed down the outside of the interior canister, up through the middle of the canister, and finally comes out right over here. I really hated the term reactor when I started out in this hobby, because those of us on the outside of this hobby have a completely different understanding of what a reactor is. For example, the only frame of reference I had was a nuclear reactor, and I was pretty sure that's not what hobbyists were referring to. And then once you dangle your toes in the shallow end of this hobby, all of a sudden you have media reactors, carbon reactors, GFO reactors, bio pellet reactors, CO2 reactors, zeovit reactors, and calcium reactors. I mean, are you kidding me? I'm telling you, it took me a good two years to fully understand what a reactor was in this hobby. So to make your first two years easier than mine were in this hobby, here is a simple definition of a reactor. A reactor is any sort of canister that holds media. Media being anything chemical, such as GFO or carbon, biological, like bio pellets, or macroalgae, such as catamorpha. Aquarium water, or air in the case of a CO2 scrubber, is passed through the media reactor, forcing it to come into contact with whatever media is inside the reactor. The interaction of aquarium water and media causes a reaction of some kind, hence the term media reactor. In a carbon reactor, the reaction is adsorption. In a biopellet reactor, it's consumption of the pellets via beneficial bacteria. And in a calcium reactor, the reaction is actually a dissolving of the media. There are benefits of using activated carbon in your aquarium and added benefits of putting that carbon inside a reactor. Activated carbon uses a process called adsorption to trap certain colors, odors, and chemicals in its porous structure. It can make your water crystal clear and eliminate those nasty odors. Activated carbon can only remove those things if the entire water column is forced through the carbon itself. And this is where a reactor performs so much better than a media bag. A media bag is merely a mesh bag that you put the carbon inside. By placing the carbon filled bag in a high flow area of your tank, your goal is to have as much water as possible pass through that media bag. While media bags do certainly work, they are way less effective than reactors. Considering the simplicity of a carbon reactor, there is a surprising selection available. When choosing the right carbon reactor for your setup, the first consideration is size. Considering the recommended dosage of ROX 0.8 carbon is one tablespoon per 10 gallons, you really don't need a very large reactor. An 80 gallon tank, for example, would only use eight tablespoons of carbon, which is one half cup, which is the exact size as the BRS mini reactor holds. Using more carbon than the recommended dose is not better, you'll just go through more of it quicker. The second consideration is location. A reactor can be placed in your sump, externally plumbed, in a rear filtration chamber, or as a hang on the back item. Knowing the best location for your reactor will help you narrow down your options. The third consideration is do you want to purchase an all-in-one reactor that contains everything you need, or are you more of a DIY person? If you don't want to have to think about buying your pump and plumbing supplies separately, then the BRS reactor kits are definitely the way to go. Not only are they the best value available, but you can be certain that they contain the correctly sized pump and all of the plumbing accoutrements you need. You'll just need to choose between the BRS standard reactor, the deluxe reactor, the dual reactor, the mini reactor, or the jumbo reactor. But if your tank requires either a hang on the back reactor or one that fits in the rear filtration chamber, you will likely have to purchase an additional pump and or plumbing gear to complete the setup. And the fourth and final consideration is ease of maintenance. Reactors can sometimes be such a pain in the butt when it comes time to swap out your media. They often require the use of a canister wrench. Your hands are gonna get wet. You may have to unplug the reactor, take everything over to your sink, and then rinse the media with RODI water before transporting everything back, putting it into your sump, and plugging it back in. So I just want you to understand that there are different styles of media reactors, some of which make your maintenance life a lot easier. For example, the Aquamax line of reactors uses thumb screws instead of a wrench, whereas the NIOS Torque and the Aquamax Sigma both have detachable bases to make removal super simple. Our overall carbon reactor choice for the vast majority of beginners is the BRS Mini Kit. It's just a great option for tanks up to 100 gallons. The small size means you can easily fit it inside your sump or externally mount it to the inside of your wooden cabinet stand. The BRS Mini Reactor Kit comes with the reactor, the pump, 
the flexible tubing, ball valve to control the flow, and sponges to really keep that carbon packed in so there's no tumbling happening. Our choice of carbon reactor for systems over 100 gallons is the BRS Deluxe Reactor Kit. It's basically just a larger, fancier version of the mini kit. Whereas that mini reactor held up to a half a cup, the deluxe reactor holds up to three cups or 48 tablespoons and is perfect for tanks up to 500 gallons in volume. And lastly, our choice for the easiest to use and maintain is the Aquamax Sigma 1. While this reactor cannot be externally plumbed, it is so easy to make adjustments and remove it for maintenance. By simply twisting the reactor, you can easily adjust the flow rate and remove it from the base when it comes time for maintenance. And you don't ever have to deal with thumb screws or canister wrenches ever again. That's because the unique suction top just requires a couple of turns to remove. Deciding on the right type of carbon can be a bit tricky for two reasons. Number one, BRS sells both ROX 0.8 carbon and bituminous carbon, so which one is better? And number two, there are several other companies that sell their own carbon under various brand names. And some of those other brand names aren't just carbon, but a mix of carbon, ion exchange resins, and GFO. But I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole right now since our focus today is just straight up carbon reactors. So choosing the right carbon is actually super simple because the best carbon out there is BRS ROX 0.8 carbon. Yes, it's a bit more costly, but you can use less of it to achieve the same results and it has been proven to adsorb more pigments than the other types of carbon out there. This one gallon container is a really good option because it saves you quite a bit of money by buying in bulk, and this one here will last most of us for a year or more. There are three easy steps for setting up your carbon reactor. Number one, selecting the right amount of carbon. Number two, packing it tightly between sponges. And number three, rinsing the carbon. Thomas will show you how it's done in this video right here. And as always, everyone, thanks for watching. Happy reefing. Be well. We'll see you next time.